Welcome to TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. Since the automobile was invented, people have been trying to find new and unique ways to put them up on the screen. And as the vehicles themselves have evolved, so is the technology with which we've been able to capture them. Enter the Mill Blackbird, the first fully adjustable car rig to capture photo real CG cars. We're here to discuss something very, very interesting today. I'm talking to Alastair Thompson and Pete King from The Mill, who have been working on a remarkable piece of technology called the Blackbird, which is right behind us here. Now, Pete, how did this all come about? We had done a project years ago for a Corvette launch where the vehicle itself didn't actually exist. It was only a design that lived in the computer at the time. What we at The Mill do is we take vehicles and in CGI and computer and post-production, and we can create new ones on top of ones that don't even exist yet. So this is basically going to solve a lot of issues for filmmakers and in particular commercial directors who maybe don't have access to the newest model that's got the latest tweaks and yeah. advancements. It, it might sound strange, but it's very difficult sometimes to get a car for a shoot. You might be shooting a feature film and the whole focus of the film is a legacy vehicle, a Ferrari from the 60s that's just impossible to get hold of or you might be doing something that's slightly futuristic and you need to create a concept vehicle. So there's many reasons to be able to visualize and create your car when you don't actually have it for real. And as Pete said, this is built based on our visual effects heritage and our ability to actually create great CG cars. But this is kind of a, a motion capture for cars, if you like. It seems like a remarkable amount of technology that you've packed into something that looks somewhat like a Batmobile. It really is fully adjustable, isn't it? I mean, every car has a different shape, ride, height, length, width. We built this on rails, the chassis itself, very specifically with hybrid types of metal so that it could be strong under driving conditions. What type of powertrain did you decide to go with? We went electric for a couple different reasons. One, because we want to be very forward thinking in the technology of this vehicle. Yep. Because there's so many different manufacturers we're dealing with, we wanted to be agnostic. So you don't want to be working on a Ford commercial when you have a Chevy engine on the inside. Yeah. Clients typically don't like that. Got you. So you want to stay, you know, keep everybody happy, yeah. essentially. And that also helps us to have the ability to program some of the acceleration curves that go specific to a vehicle that we're trying to emulate. You know, we get a lot of miles out of this thing. It's something like 100 miles at the very least on a charge. And we can actually get power back from regenerative disc brakes that are in there, like a, like a Prius or some other kind of uh, hybrid vehicle that is on the market right now. Sometimes when we're shooting commercials and uh, obviously feature films, it requires some performance driving. Is the Blackbird able to do that? We work with some of the best drivers, uh, precision drivers and stunt drivers in the world. Yep. Um, we partnered up with GemFX specifically to, to build this vehicle and they work all over the world on the biggest feature films doing stunt work. So they have a, a stable of drivers that they work with that we work with exclusively with the Blackbird. As far as components are concerned, it looks like it's pretty much all 100% custom built. It looks like you've got your engineers. The guys engineers here built an awful lot of it. So yeah. GemFX built the chassis and yep. the, the, the vehicle, if you like. And most of this is not something you can buy anywhere uh, off the shelf. So a lot of it's machined in the workshop here because it is so unique. I mean, underneath here, for example, there are 44 lithium ion batteries that drive this thing. So it's wow. actually very heavy. It's the same weight as a normal say, car. Might be a bit heavy, yeah. um, Which is good. We want it to be the same way. So it's going to act. It acts, acts the same so way. Right. Now, I guess a lot of the, the real serious tech looks like it's going on in this central hub. What's all this about? Well, you're right on. So as Alistair had mentioned before, that the vehicle is meant to capture the lighting and the other data so that we can rescan the vehicle in any other vehicle that we're trying to emulate. So this is a custom-built camera array 
made with uh, four different red cameras with specific fisheye lenses and yep. shot at angles so that we get what we call a dome, a HDRI. And so it's capturing all the different angles around it that we would need to get the lighting reflection that, and get in posts that we could put around the outside of the vehicle. We have the ability to be uh, constantly monitoring and doing some rough stitching on set, but then the real kind of fine work gets done uh, in the post process. On the top, what's the what is the thing that we've got there spinning on the top? That's a silly way to ask a question, but that's the only way to know it. Is so, that a LiDAR? Well, yeah, what you have on top there is a LiDAR scanner. People use those to make sure cars won't hit people yep. on self-autonomous vehicles. In our instance, we're doing it to scan the environment. Now, the reason for doing that is to capture reflection data. So we need to know how far objects are from the car. Yeah. So if you're this close, five feet from the car, you need to be strongly reflected. At what point does this become uh, profitable? I don't want to get into your finances too much or anything like that. I mean, we this doesn't look, into our it looks expensive. That's all I wanted to say. It looks expensive. It looks, you know, I guess reassuringly expensive, as they say. Yeah. I think a lot of this was about time and effort and yep. collaboration between some really good people to make it come to life. It's probably not as expensive as you might think it looks, but I think that's because everyone involved believes it's going to be a really great tool. Well, the Mill Blackbird may very well be one of the most innovative and useful tools for automotive advertisers and filmmakers alike. So next time you're watching a car on the screen, you may very well just be looking at the Mill Blackbird. For TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We'll catch you next time.